I had an interesting, albeit somewhat frustrating, discussion about evolution with an acquaintance recently, which reinforced my perception regarding the misunderstanding most people have about the science. He started to say, Duh, so if we come from apes... I had to correct him at that point because any further discussion needed to be based on the facts of evolution rather than the distortion creationists try to pass off as evolution. No, I said. We don't come from apes. Humans are apes. And we share a common ancestor with other modern apes like chimps, bonobos, and orangutans. I explained a bit about the evolutionary tree of life, genetic and morphological similarities of creatures, gradual change over time, and the mechanism of natural selection which drives evolution. We talked about the fact that other great apes have 24 pairs of chromosomes, while humans only have 23 which would seem to disprove common ancestry, unless our chromosomes had fused in the past. Well, sure enough, it's chromosome two. He periodically quipped in with various misconceptions about random chance and design. I explained how natural selection and other factors, rather than sheer chance, determines what traits are passed on from generation to generation. He then said, But I seen pictures from a hundred years ago, and the people didn't look any different than they do today. I explained that when evolutionists speak of gradual change over time, it's a massive amount of time. The age of the Earth is an expanse of time so incomprehensible and mind-boggling that it's nearly impossible to fathom. That is, of course, an astonishing 6,000 years. Uh... I used the analogy of a football field to represent the actual age of the Earth, 4.6 billion years, and asked him to guess where on the field the earliest humans appeared. He pointed to the 30-yard line. When I told him that he was on the right end of the field, but still off by nearly 30 yards, and that our entire history as a species would encompass no more than the blade of grass on the goal line, his eyes sort of glazed over, and he just looked bewildered. This, ironically, lit a light bulb over my noggin. It's no wonder it's so easy for creationists to cast doubt on evolution. They speak in simple terms and use concepts that are easy for Joe Sixpack to understand. But like any other science, evolution is complex, and it generally deals in time frames that the average person just can't wrap their brain around. We live but a brief instant in comparison to the times involved in fields like geology, paleontology, or cosmology. We have no frame of reference to comprehend even a million years, much less a billion or more. It's an abstract that never comes into play in daily life for most of us. We can envision, say, a hundred pennies in a pile. A thousand is a bit harder, but still we can get it. But there comes a point when the physical representation of a very large number just becomes impossible for most people to visualize and without being able to picture it. The brain just wants to disregard the whole thing and watch the Jersey Shore instead. That's the challenge for rationalists. We need a concise and accurate explanation of evolution that keeps the average brain from imploding. Perhaps we can use the example of stalactites, which grow at an average rate of 0.0051 inches a year as minerals are deposited by single water droplets. At that slow and steady pace, a 30-foot stalactite would take over 70,000 years to form. The existence of these beautiful formations certainly proves the Earth is much older than biblical genealogies indicate. But even 70 to 100,000 years is still infinitesimal in comparison to the oldest known rocks on Earth, exposed on the eastern shore of Hudson Bay in northern Quebec, 
and thought to be ancient volcanic deposits, which have been dated at 4.28 billion years, as detailed in the journal Science and supported by the National Science and Engineering Research Council of Canada, the U.S. National Science Foundation, and the Carnegie Institution of Washington. So we're back to the time dilemma. How to adequately explain what billions of years means in a way that makes sense. I mean, if a stalactite had been forming for 4.3 billion years, it would be 350 miles long today. So help me out here. How would you describe a billion or more years and how tiny evolutionary changes accumulate and branch into the marvelous diversity of life around us? But if you're uncomfortable trying to comprehend big ideas and prefer the soothing mental security blanket of desert mythology, air, 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 air.